much for coming out. My name is Alex Ike. For those of you who don't know me, I know most of us know Ben. Um, tonight we've uh, put our brains together to bring all these beautiful people here and uh, talk a little bit about paid media. We have some amazing panelists to tell us all the ins and outs of what goes into bringing more business to our business. So thank you guys so much. And yeah, welcome. Let's have a good time. If you have questions, we're going to do Q&A. And um, yeah, we're all good. So. Ben, over to you. Brother, give it up for Ben and Sarah. Here? We're figuring it out. Back at the time. <laughs> all right, all right. How's everyone doing? Give a round of applause for yourself. Let's go. Put the energy up. Let's go. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Jersey City Tech Meetup. Everyone give it up for Abundance Alex. It's been an amazing opportunity to collaborate with him. Put it all together. Super excited. Yeah. Uh, for the show of hands, whose first Jersey City Tech Meetup event is this? Oh, damn. Give it up for yourselves, everybody. That's what I'm talking about, the newcomers. Let's go. Who's been here before, the Jersey City Tech Meetup? That's what I'm talking about, the OGs. Give it up for yourself. Well, come on, give it up for yourself. Alright, so for those who don't know, the Jersey City Tech Meetup is an organization that is all around community and education, really bringing us all together to learn new stuff about tech and the things happening in the world so we can grow and thrive together as a community. Because I don't feel we need to be so competitive and step on people to be successful. I think we could all be very successful together if we collaborate with our heads together. And that's why we're all here. So I just really appreciate you all being here with me. Making this event possible. Like, fuck, it's been a while since we had some in-person events, right? Let's go, we're in person again. This is real. It's amazing. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Alright, so who thinks they came here from the furthest away tonight? To Jersey City. Alright, where'd y'all come from in the back? Yep, that's you. Philadelphia. Ooh, we got the from Philadelphia. Everyone give it up for Mark and Sadie from Philadelphia. <laughs> Anyone come from further than Philly? Alright, you won yourself a free beer from the keg. Go redeem your reward. Go to the bar, Tucker. Let's go. Give it up. Give it up. Alright, alright. I don't want to. We have an amazing panel lined up covering paid media and the future of what it entails for your business and brand. And I want to get into that. First, we have a few things to cover. Um, before I jump into my sponsors for this amazing event, I would like to open the floor. Uh, this is something I've done back in the day, back in 2019 when I was having these in-person events. And uh, it was really great, so don't be shy. But essentially, I want to create five minutes right now for anyone to shout themselves out, promote themselves in the audience. If you're looking for a business partner, if you're looking for clients, if you have an event coming up, anything. I just want to give this opportunity for the community. So uh, don't be shy. Does anyone have anything they would like to share here? Because it's uh, free advertising, really. So I recommend taking me up on this. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, my, my name is Tony, uh, the founder of Soundbook Audio. Uh, Soundbook Audio is an application, an iOS application uh, for authors, for students. You'll be able to not only e-books, e-books, you can also uh, publish your own book, and uh, it's really uh, good. It's, it's completely free, you can download it from our store. All right, everyone, give it up, give it up, that's awesome. And be sure after the, the panel to connect with each other and make sure you get each other's information so you can stay in touch and make stuff happen about it. That's what it's all about. Does anyone, have, anyone else have anything they'd like to share with the community? There we go, big gal. Yay! How you doing, y'all? Thank you for coming to my event. <laughs> uh, my name is Miguel Santiago, and I am a father of three, divorced father of three, and I'm a, a subconscious mind coach and a meditation guide as well. So I'm here for breath work, meditation, and uh, rewiring the subconscious mind. Thank you. Yes, yes, it will put up. All right, y'all see how this works? Great opportunity to share what you do and try to find new people to uh, connect with you. Don't be shy. Anyone else? 
Yes, Harvey, that's what I was hoping you'd do. giving people the strategy, the tools, and the motivation to be able to take that step and actually perform at the level that they do. So I'm a holistic peak performance coach. I help people that are high performers and want to do it holistically. So if that sounds like you, if you are looking to really up your health, be a little bit more present, maybe more productive, definitely come talk to me. I would love to hear your story and see how I can help. Thank you. Yes, yes, I love to see it. All right, we got to, did you want to, uh, hey. I am Cisa, I, I work as a virtual assistant, that's my uh, short term goal. My long term goal is, I have a business called Fun Fighters, I partner up with Ben. <laughs> and so, yes, hit me up, please. <laughs> Jersey City and Hoboken place, so hit them up, get some bag of pizza. 
Next, we got Jobo on the photo. What's up, brother? Everyone give it up for Jobo right here. That's it, you work for you said it's the worst. It's one I am one. I'm Joe. Uh, I am a local photographer. I've been working with Van and Alex for a little bit. Um, yeah, super excited to be out here. And uh, it's always a good time. So, yeah, we're going to go Thanks so much, brother. I should probably tell people that I'm going to give them the mic at some point before I do it. So, thanks for doing it on the fly, bro. I appreciate it. Bible Energy Team. Dan in the back, he's hooking it up with the amazing drinks that bring the good vibes and the good energy. You want to keep working with Mike? You want to say something? What's up, y'all? Thank you, Ben, for having us. Um, Bible stands for good vibes and balanced energy, and we're just trying to help inspire people to be at their best and follow your dreams. Always follow your dreams. Thank you. Thank you. And last, but absolutely not least, is Partners in Sound, NJ, and the yeah, agency. Our boy Carrie over here at T, making the DJ possible, making the noise possible, making the heat. So let's get it. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Without further ado, I would love to kick this thing off the right way, which you've all been waiting for, paint media pioneers, with our panelists over here. And uh, before I introduce him, I want to say, we did have Joe Cameron as a panelist, and he had to deal with some situation tonight. We're not sure exactly what it was, but I just want us all to send good vibes to Joe, and uh, wish him well on his journey. We're still going to crush it here. we got Cynthia, and Ashley, and Alex in his place, so welcome everyone. Everyone, give it up for the panel. Yeah, that's a great question. 
I don't know if you guys heard this, but organic reach is dead. It's not totally dead. Especially, it's pretty much non-existent on Facebook. I think a lot of these platforms are very much pay to play these days, and so what's really great about paid is that you get super targeted, super narrow, um, who it is you want to reach, and um, I think it should really be a part of everyone's digital marketing strategy. It doesn't, you know, like obviously paid, so I'm biased against organic. The two really go hand in hand. If you really want to maximize your efforts, reach new audience members, that's where paid really comes into play. Awesome. Ashley, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that too. Kind of what are the benefits of paid versus organic? Yeah, it's um, similar to what Cynthia said. I would say for us, paid really gives us that targeted reach. So I mean, we can target literally this block in Jersey City if we wanted to. We can target everyone at this event. But also we can do as broad as adults 18 to 24, adults 18 to 34. Really honing in on that target I think is key. Knowing what your brand wants and who you want to grow with. Um, that's the benefit of paid. Really making sure that you're getting your message to the right people or the people that you want it to explore and expand beyond that. So if I want you guys to spread the uh, word to another one that is amongst your peers, that will really help with that pain targeting. Yeah, I have something to say. Add it up. I think like when I ever, whenever I pitch like paint to someone, I think the just thought is really like reaching the right people at the right time on the right platform and the right message. All that good fun. You can't really do that as much. So do you think there's, and this goes to either one, we can jump in as you see fit, but do you think there is too broad of an audience? Like, some people might look at it and like pick like, oh, 18 to 65, Jersey City, Tech, all these things, and it says like, you have a reach of like 10 million plus. Do you think that can hurt you if you have too broad of a, a stroke across these audiences, or do you think you should hone in? Like, what's the sweet spot there? Do you want to jump in? So I think it depends. There's too niche and too large. Depending on your brand, depending on your product, depending on the size of your company. If you're a small business in Jersey City, you want to be targeted. You want to have that small reach. If you're a company like Frito Lay and you Tostitos and you want everyone in the U.S. to buy Tostitos, you can't be broad enough. So it really is depending and also depends on your media budgets. If you have big budgets and you're going larger, your efficiencies will be greater. If you're paying to get that niche or target, and you're willing to spend that more money to get that qualified user. It might pay off in the end, and literally if you have those larger budgets and you're going wider, a bag of Tocitos chips is three, four dollars. A CrossFit membership is four hundred dollars a month. Does it pay to get that person for fifty dollars if you're making three fifty profit? Yeah, and to add on to that, uh, these platforms use an algorithm. So it really depends on the kind of data that you have. So well, let's take Facebook for example. So if I have the Facebook pixel on my website, and I work with direct consumer brands in the e-commerce space, so I have the Facebook pixel on my website, right? I'm absorbing all that data, I'm gathering all the data of everyone who purchased over the past 30 days or so. So when I target really broad, I'm actually leveraging Facebook's machine learning to, you know, go in and say, like, based on the data that Facebook has approved, Facebook knows, okay, you gave me a really broad audience, but I have data that makes a moment go after specific. So for me, going broad is actually part of my strategy, and it works pretty effectively. But that really depends on how much data we have accrued on the back end. Yeah. And just uh, sorry, buddy. Now we're all awake. I just <laughs> just to kind of like step it back a little bit, like talking about the pixel. A lot of people talk about the pixel, the pixel. You got to have a pixel in place, but just for people like. Say someone does not know what the fuck a pixel is. Can you just kind of explain what a pixel is and why that's important when leveraging the data for your analytics? I'll jump in. Uh, the pixel is a way for you to track and measure your efforts on the back end. So in order for you to tell, let's say you're running an e-commerce business, right, or you have a Shopify store, and uh, in order for you to really capture the amount of people, whoever specific action, you need something, a snippet of code on the back end of your website to receive all of that data. So then, then you can tell Facebook, hey, I want to optimize for everyone who have to part. I want to optimize for anyone who purchased. It's just essentially a way of receiving information. Uh, if that makes sense, that's what the Facebook is on the back end. It's just receiving information. Right. So yeah. find your target. 
And not only on Facebook, if you have your own brand website, say you go from home page view to fill out this form to form complete, you can track people how far down the funnel or how far down the road they've gotten. So you might want to retarget the people that went to the form but didn't fill it all the way out, maybe again in a week, two months, depending on like what your product is that you're selling, to make sure you're really driving them down there to make the action of whatever you want them to do. Whether it be purchase, sign up, ask for more information, call an agent, whatever it could be. Yeah, even like people that have been on your website for a certain amount of time, you know, you can track that. Uh, they're obviously more engaged. Yeah, I would also say purchase frequency for free to products. How often do you eat a bag of chips? If you eat a bag of chips every two to three weeks, if you want to target you again in three weeks, reminding you to buy another bag of chips. If you are a car and you bought a car a year ago, you're probably not going to buy a car very soon. So you're going to want to target them again in like two, three, four years down the line. So you keep those people in a pool and then retarget them later. It's just effective advertising. This is really fun, by the way, because it's very rare that I get to like, just, like bouncing off of people. Usually it's just like super nerdy. This is a safe place for This is a safe place. This is, a, this is the tech meetup. We're here to go now. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. You're like, like, oh, can you get me? You really get me. <laughs> but yeah, well, I mean, yeah, and I want to dive more into like retargeting all like the actual logistics in a, in a bit. I want to kind of just, I guess, lay the ground foundation right now. Like terms like ROAS and all those like buzzwords that businesses use, and I, <laughs> I want Alice to jump in too. What are like what are some of these terms that people should be aware of? And uh, is your mic broken? <laughs> Is it? All right. So yeah, and I know we can jump into this. Like, what are some of those terms that people should be aware of, and what do they mean? And do you are those what you're tracking? You know, like. Do you want to jump in? Let's start with that. What's that? K W A C. No K A C. I would I would even take it a step further. LTV. In order for you to run anything effectively, like even beyond paid media, especially paid, you need to know your numbers. Right. So you need to know, like we throw around CAC, and I say CPA, CPA is your cost per acquisition. And the reason why you want to know your cost per acquisition is like, okay, if I pay this much for someone to make a purchase, is that profitable for me? You know, you take it a step further, like, you should really be knowing if like your profit margins, right? Um, your overhead costs, like just you know, what it takes to run your business and where you're where you're profitable. And then we take it a step further um, by using these kind of very terms, CPA, cost per acquisition, cost per click, um, ROAS, which is return on ad spend. So based on, I guess I could go really nerdy here, but if you know your profit margins, then I can run a simple formula and I can say, okay, in order for us to be profitable with advertising, we need to break even at three times return. Meaning for every dollar we put in, on advertising, we need to get three dollars back. So that's why it's important to know your numbers first, and then you know, double click by uh, sorry, double click into that uh, with these terminologies, like ROAS, CPC. Yeah, I would say the terminologies are useful when you're buying your own media. So if you guys are running your own Facebook campaigns or YouTube campaigns, you're definitely going to want to know how much you're paying cost per. <laughs> sorry. Telling me to put a closer to Yeah, he's like telling us <laughs> in the back how to use it so like. <laughs> So basically, if you're running your own Facebook campaign or a YouTube campaign, when you're putting pre roll, say you're doing meditation or you're doing life coach, and you're putting it before someone who's saying gold wins gold medal, like you need to do this, you're targeting in a certain way. How much are you willing to pay for someone to click on your ad to then drive you to your website? CPM is cost per thousand impressions, so a thousand people viewing your ad. So how many, how much are you willing to pay for a thousand people to see your ad for three seconds? Because that's considered in view. You mentioned the pre-roll, right? So on YouTube, you have what pre-roll, mid-roll, pre-roll, mid-roll, and then pre-roll could also range. So pre-roll is the ad that everyone loves that you have to wait five seconds to skip before you get to actually watch your content. Um, it could be a forced view, meaning you don't get that option to click out. But it can range from 6 seconds to 15 to 30 to even 60 seconds. Obviously, it's a fine line between pissing your consumer off with a 60 second ad before you look and watch a 30 second clip, or a 6 second bumper that they need, need to watch before they're uh, clip. And 
and then mid-roll it goes in the middle of your content, and then post-roll, which no one really does because you have to look out of the video before it even shows. Um, but same thing with like audio out of Spotify, Pandora, SoundCloud. You get an ad of free listening for an hour. You get a ad in between your playlists. You're making sure that you're tracking with those CPCs, CPA, CPMs, to make sure that you are going to pay that amount of money to get that consumer to view or listen to your ad. And a lot of it is really dependent on the kind of campaigns that you're running. Like for example, CPMs really matter on Facebook and also on YouTube campaigns, right? Also on Blu ray and all that other stuff. Um, so it really depends on what you're selling, what platform you are on as well. But uh, overall, I would say that it's also important to understand these things so that you can keep your own benchmarks. So you can say, okay, my CPM last month was um, $20. I'm trying to shape that down. I'm trying to shape down my CPA. Here's my benchmark CPA. Over the next three, three months or so, or the next quarter, our goal is to shape that down. So that's why you know, we, we hold true those specific terminologies or you know, whatever we refer to them as so that we can keep those benchmarks and then refine and optimize as we go. Yeah, and I think it also depends on what the goal of your campaign is, right? So at the beginning, you can probably advertise this for a few months, so you want to make sure you're getting awareness. So you want to witness it off the CPM because you're reaching thousands of people. But then when you're getting lower and you want people to actually sign up and buy tickets, you're probably looking more at your CPCs and your CPA, cost per acquisition of someone buying a ticket to whatever you're giving, you're buying a product. So as you're going higher in the awareness, getting the message out, and then going down, you're going to want to change what you're looking at. How do you help a company, like, how would one know what their CPA is, like, a cost per acquisition? Like, how do you figure that out with them, or what kind of numbers, or does Facebook tell you? And I guess the second part of that question is, how do you guarantee that number to your clients? That's, that's, that's why you hire us. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us the secrets. Uh, do you have any secrets? Because the truth is, <laughs> like, you get a ton of projections. Facebook will tell you what industry average CPMs are. You can Google it, whatever the case is, but you're always off because there's so many variables at play. You know, like for example, your cost per click, click on Google depends so heavily on your landscape, but then on top of that, it's like the entire experience on your landing page, which then you know, leads to your quality score. Let's table that for a second. There's so many variables involved. So I might uh, Google or just based on my uh, knowledge of like the e-commerce space, and in the beauty space, I know CPCs are X. When I run ads, that might completely change. That's because there's so many variables involved. And that's what I tell people sometimes. I don't know what you, what you usually say. Yeah, so Frito Lay has 20 something brands under their portfolio. So a Tostitos versus a Smart Food, where a Smart Food is a niche or target, or like a healthier chip, it's going to be more expensive to get the people that are healthy and to buy those products. They're also higher price points. Tostitos, if we're going broader, it's going to be easier to get those people in, so the CBC CPMs will be lower. It also depends on a million other things that are happening in the world. As we all know, last year no one went for that. So throw any CPC you saw out the window. The best data that you could ever use is your own. So if you're running something, month one, over two, over three, over four, see how you're progressing or you're progressing. And that will probably be, in my opinion, the best benchmarks to use. You obviously always want to draw the lowest CPC, the lowest CPM, because that gets you more than your media bucks. What I do with my clients, like, if we're entering an unknown area, they've never run ads before, the first thing I do in order to develop this strategy is really just check out the competitive landscape. What are the, their competitors doing? And then, you know, we have, I don't know, if you use SEM Rush, Spyfu, there's a ton of platforms that we can use in order to check, like, their, whatever their uh, keyword they're bidding on, that specific CPC there. And then I can say, like, these CPCs are based on this, CPCs are usually, like, in the space or the I've seen them range all the way up to like two hundred dollars a month in the lawyer space. And so from there, I can delineate a budget and I say I give you a range. You need to spend this and this much to see any kind of results. And then from there, we can refine our benchmarks. But essentially, the best data to optimize based off of is your own data. You need to run your own ads. I can give you estimates. You're usually not ever correct. Um, and then from there. So it sounds like what you're saying is that depending on the industry, the vertical and the cost per click could vary. And that's because why? Facebook is some kind of auction or something like that? How does it work? Yeah, so Facebook is an auction, but it's also, you can buy it on a reach frequency. 
frequency tool, tool. So basically you're reaching X amount of people X amount of times. So reach is how many people you're you're seeing with the ad. Seeing the ad. Frequency is how many times they're seeing the ad. So you can toggle it essentially saying you want adults 18 to 34. And it will say with your budget you can reach this many adults for this price. And that's just the going in for the reach frequency, but if you enter the auction, it's a biddable auction, so that could change on a duck. If a lot of people are targeting those people, that price is going to go up. If you're targeting something very broad or something that isn't really very targeted, then those CPCs could go down. But again, to your point, one of our brands, we could have a dollar CPC in Q1, and then it could go to Q4 or Q2, June, July, it could go up to $5. Depending on the atmosphere, depending on the time of the year, it could change and vary up and down. So you can more or less predict that or foresee it. Is that something that you can advise the clients saying, like, listen, we're getting into busy season, you know, you might want to increase your budget, you might want to increase your spend uh, if you want to stay competitive? Yeah, it's also a balance of the targeting again. So if we are initially targeted and we know that CPMs are going to spike in the summer months for chips because people have barbecues and such. Then we say, like, let's open up the targeting so we can drive down that, that fit those efficiencies and make it more broadly targeted. But again, you're reaching double the amount of people because your CPC or CPM is lower. Awesome. That, that, sorry, you want to add something to that? Yeah, I was going to say, if, like smaller businesses, sometimes if it gets really competitive, sometimes it doesn't even make sense to run ads. You know, like, there's, like, you know, it's a way, obviously, like, they have a ton of budget. Um, and they're probably the reason why. Q4, right? your yeah, Q4, everything is going up, thanks. But um, sometimes it doesn't really make sense to compete if your CPM is going to high because then you're not profitable, which is why it's really important to understand your own redeeming numbers. This is a great segue to what I wanted to talk about. I love this uh, dynamic here because you know you work with smaller businesses with Cynthia's marketing and you work with corporations. So I kind of want to hear from both of your perspectives like what the decision making process is behind your clients. Like for you, like, the company like Frito Lay is like what a, what number do they say is our budget? Like that's the and then for you like when you talk to them, what are they looking for as far as returns and and what kind of numbers are they putting into it? So from a small business perspective and the corporation perspective, I'd love to hear both sides of it. Yeah, so our budgets are in the millions. It could range from ten million to fifty million on Facebook in one year, which also means we're spending similar on Google and also Snapchat and TikTok and anything else, publisher direct. I mean, there's ample dollars floating around at all times. The way that we get briefed is they decide internally what their marketing budget is uh, for the year by brand, and then we have a planning side of the house that takes all the historical learnings, which is the most efficient channel, which one are we getting the best return on, and then we kind of pivot it out into 20% of the budget will go to TV, 30% will go to Facebook, so on for Google and around. However, that could also change with the drop of the dime. In 2020, we stopped advertising on Facebook because of all the civil unrest in the world. So those budgets, they got switched to other places that people were going. Budgets just dropped at the, the turn of <laughs> Do you decide those budget switches? Or does the company yeah. come to you and say, yeah, we're going to stop at Facebook? Or is that your call? It's our point of view that we are recommending for clients to switch budgets depending on what's happening. So if people are staying home now, maybe we should be more on TV or connected devices or YouTube because you're not you're no longer scrolling through Facebook on your commute to work. You have more time in the morning. Maybe you'll listen to a podcast. Maybe you'll watch an episode of Netflix before you go. There's many different things of like how consumers are changing their consuming their consumption of media on the fly. I'm sure everyone's day to day changed very drastically last year and even now compared to a couple of months ago. So you need to be ready and up on industry tactics to make sure that you are recommending to the clients kind of what's best for them and what will really drive the return for their dollars. So it's, a, it's not so, so different on my end. I work with e-commerce brands, so actually during the pandemic, we saw a huge rise in sales, specifically with the clients that I've worked with. One of my biggest clients sells electric standing desks, and we just boomed, and it was insane. So the kind of budgets that I deal with on a monthly basis range between 50k and about 150k. And during the next really big client, and it was just an incredible environment of like a lot of hustle. And uh, I love it. It empowers you when you see other entrepreneurs come from nothing and at that capacity and like, rubbing shoulders with like barbecue corporate and office and everything. It 
there's no, like, you, you just know internally, like, okay, that could totally be me. So, it's awesome. Oh, yeah, and it is us, because we're all here right now. We're doing it. Awesome. Well, just uh, to wrap up before we jump into Q and A, I just want to kind of go down the line and just uh, have you say where people can find you and uh, any final words you want to say, and then we'll do Q and A. And I'll just kick that off by saying, if anyone is interested in future events with the Jersey City Tech Meetup, the best thing you can do is follow us on Instagram at JC Tech Meetup, or go to jctechmeetup.com, and you'll see the rest of our events because we're going to keep them coming. And now, in person, is happening. We're really excited to keep this train moving. So with that, I'll pass it to you to share where people can find you. And any final words you have? Nice. Final words. Thank you guys so much for having me and for listening to me and nerd out with analytics and all these things that my fiance is so tired of. Uh, but you can find me at CynthiasMarketing.com. On Instagram, I am uh, at the Cynth Sandoval. I uh, would love to connect with each and every one of you. It would be amazing. And uh, that's all. So you can find me at silver.ashley at Outlook. Um, or my Instagram is actually Emma Silver. Really driving home that brand name. Um, thank you guys for having me. This has been great. Um, it's been great talking to some of you guys prior and hopefully after as well. But yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, thank you both for being here and doing this for us. I really appreciate both of you. You guys can find me on Instagram. I am Alex Ike. My personal brand is Abundance Alex. I'm all about expanding the collective energy, bringing more abundance into our lives, becoming wealthy, and just doing beautiful, amazing things for each other as humans. Also, should I talk about the next event? Yes. Our next event, we're going to be putting it together. It's going to be on non-fungible tokens, NFTs. <laughs> Who's creating the copy? 
if I don't know how to design it. It seems like another cost. So I'm just curious for somebody that's starting out, um, at what point is it worthwhile for them to jump into this? So, if you're starting out, I think you should really handle it yourself if you're spending under $5,000 a month. That's when you really need to step in, you need to you know, watch those YouTube tutorials, maybe hire someone on Upwork to help you with the overall creatives or something like that, you've got to ragtag it, right? Um, in regards to costs, like say if you have a budget of 10000 or maybe 7000 and you're just looking to get some help, right? You would, if you hire a consultant or an agency, usually they'll cover everything. They'll cover the, the design, the copywriting, at least the, the good ones. There's a lot of shifty people in this, in this field. I think you know that for sure, right? Yeah. So the good ones will cover all of that. Uh, the, even the video ads, like I do video advertising, I have a design team, I have an editing team, and that will help me execute all of that. Um, so you need to think about your overall monthly budget. Sometimes it's also like certain agencies charge differently. They charge based on the spend bracket. So if you're spending, you know, four thousand dollars, they charge X. Their management fees are X price. Um, or sometimes a lot of a lot of agencies I see charge a certain percentage of spend. Um, sometimes they they do performance based based on the amount of leads that you generate. You know, like maybe you can get to a kind of arrangement with that, right? I think the best thing that you can do is just like network and see, you know, who's doing what, get your feelers out there, and go for a referral. Like I said, this industry can be a little weird, so but if someone refers you and they've done work. For for a friend in the past, you can then trust them and you can maybe work out a deal with them if they're you know, starting off themselves, right? Yeah, I would also say that lean into your network. There's plenty of people out there, some might have a creative agency or creative Photoshop, anything like that, experience in general. One of my friends owns her own boxing um, attire company. Her cousin's friend's friend knew how to use a couple of different creative solutions put some ads together for her, she literally took those, uploaded them to Facebook, took the classes on Facebook and ran her own ads. The first couple weren't that great, but she learned from her mistakes, she also learned by using the tool. So I would say lean into your network, see who you can leverage, see who you can bounce ideas also off of. Some people, if you're in the small business industry, you probably know other people that have small businesses. Are they advertising on Facebook? Have you done it on Google? Can you guys bounce ideas back off of each other? I think the first step is like you don't want to spend X amount on a creative agency and then X amount on a media agency and then find out like, shit, I could have done this for half the amount of money if I just took the time to myself explore it a little bit before just diving in. Doing it yourself also allows you to better delegate and kind of know if you're doing the right job. Like, I think that's super important. I mean, I was happy, like, when I was working with David, I myself learned a ton of SEO because I had to manage an agency that wasn't exactly doing the right job. It's good as that. Sometimes you need to get on their ass a little bit, but in order to do that, you need to know what exactly to delegate. So that's why I think it's really important if you have a under 5K budget, do the homework yourself and just set yourself up so that you can eventually offload that and delegate to a consultant or a small agency. Awesome, thank you. The cloud on your next. What's so up, guys? Uh, thanks again for coming. Um, I just had a question about just digital marketing. You know, as great as it is, um, it's something that changed immensely over a short period of time. You know, like some things that you learned like 2019 is probably irrelevant now. Is there like some insider trading information like that you guys are like witnessing or experiencing like from 2020 that going into 2021 that you know like people like us should know that probably don't you know we're not supposed to every day. Have you updated your iPhone lately? I was 14 update. Yeah, yeah no, that, that's something I'm aware of. Like, what do you guys say? Yeah. So, depending on the client, depending on like what you're selling, what you're doing. iOS, the update of iOS 14 basically says like, will you allow my information to be shared amongst other apps on the phone? So, your Facebook data with your Snapchat data with someone else's data, and then all those apps can use that to target you. If you start saying no, don't share my information, then that data will only sit on that app. It is harder for small businesses who are looking for people who are, have been to a gym before on Facebook. So you want Facebook to be leveraging maps data, or you want Facebook to be utilizing Snapchat's data because they checked it to a, st a stadium. It's harder for you to leverage that information. Obviously, it's not available for some consumers. So a lot of small businesses are losing those targeting abilities because they don't have the money to pay for 
these data charges that we do. I mean, it's 25 cents on a dollar, but if you only have five dollars, do you really want to put one fourth of your money towards these data fees that are may or may not be as great as you want? So that's just one example, but Read the Trades, Ad Age, um, DigiDay, they're all ones that will have what's new with Snapchat this month? What's going on now? As soon as something comes out, there will be 30 articles about it. So I would just say look at the trades amongst that, but also make sure that you're following Facebook if you want to advertise on Facebook, following all of their business reports and all of their um, upcoming agendas and spokespeople that are talking about it. Or Look at the people that are heading the company and see what they're announcing. It really is a second job staying up to date on the world. Yeah, so on my end, what I do is I follow a lot of blogs that are run by like top wine agencies in the big media space. Fox follows Paul and I Facebook. Um, what I've noticed because of the iOS update, that's a great intro to it, is that obviously there's a ton of data loss, right? So, this is something that I've been on actually before the iOS update, but it's account consolidation, right? So what that means is it's essentially like on Google, our targeting used to be extremely granular, and to some extent it still can be, and that works with certain accounts. I've seen everything work in an account. Um, but with Facebook, really consolidating your interest-based targeting and even your lookalike audiences and things like that, giving Facebook more and more data to leverage their machine learning platform is absolutely critical. That's something that I've probably learned in the past month and been more aggressive on with my accounts. The only way that I know that is actually through testing, a lot of like just testing on my own, testing a ton of what works, like what kind of lookalike audiences. Are you familiar with lookalike audiences at all? Yeah, yeah. So lookalike audiences are essentially when you tell Facebook, hey, here's a group of people, create a people that look like this original audience. And so that's really like the magic of Facebook advertising are these lookalike audiences. And you know, this performance is it's not performing as well with lookalike audiences. And what I've been testing is creating more super targeted lookalike audience, audiences. Um, um, a lot of my clients use Shopify. So exporting data of anyone who purchased um, more than two times, because these are much more, uh, there's more user and buyer intent of these specific people, and creating like super lookalikes from that, from different ranges. And I'm more limited to an ad set, giving Facebook all of this data and leveraging, leveraging all of that machine learning has been, you know, knocking my accounts out of, you know, out of the water. Even throughout this whole data loss, my accounts are performing extremely well. Yeah. Yeah, I would also say LinkedIn. Like, follow the companies that inspire you or competitor companies to you. What are they doing? What are they putting out there in the press that they're trying to impress their users by doing? If you're looking to advertise on Facebook, follow Facebook updates. Follow the larger ad agencies and their subsidiaries because they're posting the great work that they're doing. So they're also going to be on top of the trend and want to be the first people to put it out there that they're capitalizing on that. So if you're following them, you'll have way more than you want to read on any subject. PPC land search engine as well. They have to get a ton of articles from all of these. E-marketers. Yeah. yeah, there's so many. Uh, you, can, you can send me an email and I'll send you all my video box. Awesome. We have a question here, then after that we have time for one last question. Yeah, okay. In terms of uh, the platforms uh, such as YouTube, uh, Facebook, TikTok, all these platforms, they made it easier. Uh, they have the, 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 the tools made it easier for anyone can you know, create an ad and post it there. So I'd like to know what kind of a specific a software or what you have, what's your advantage for it so that I can use it because regardless of the budget, you know, anyone will be able to use an ad because the tools themselves are very easy. So what's your, a specific advantage for you have so that I can use your services instead of you know, doing it myself? I see what you're asking. So, you know, you can run an ad, uh, but the really the differentiating factor between, say, someone like you who's managing an entire business on your own, I don't know what your team looks like, like that, um, eventually that gets too much. You know? it, it's, if you're managing 50K budget per month, and then also creating ads on a weekly basis, like, that alone is a full-time job. So eventually you have to offer that. And eventually you don't have time to dig into the analytics and to, to sift in all of that data and the scale of the business and glean all of those insights. Lots of times if you think, you know, just advertising with Google and Facebook is just as simple as you know, clicking on an ad. Google has simple, like, smart campaigns that you can run. I'll tell you right now, they're not really effective uh, because they, they don't really show you too much data on your end. They won't be as an advertiser. I understand this and I'm running the ads a little bit more uh, 
uh, so that I can glean as ma many insights as possible. Uh, and I'm also, it's the strategy behind it, you know, like I've actually written things down based on what has worked previously for my clients, based on the case studies. So that would be the major difference. You know, like if you have the time to dedicate it for yourself and do an excellent job, I think you should continue in, in work to build your house and uh, your team in house uh, but eventually, if that becomes too hard to manage, I would imagine so if you manage an entire operation, a business on your own, that's where people often they, they want to scale, they want a different pair of eyes, they want a new creative vision with it, a new strategy. That's what they often do. Yeah, so I would say, like, for my team alone, I manage a team of 16 people that are managing 22 brands across all digital channels. We also have 16 people on the planning side that are looking at projections out as far as 2022, 2023. And then we also have our clients who are looking at their interior and how their growth is going to go for the rest of their business. If you're stuck in the analytics and uploading Facebook ad and doing all this other stuff, how are you going to focus on the rest of the parts of your business? So that's why the benefit is to us is we have 16 dedicated people who are monitoring your Facebook campaign on an hourly basis. We also have larger budgets. So for you, you can do it on your own to a certain point when you're growing your business larger. Then you might want to bring someone up who can manage Facebook and you can focus on the business part of the house, or vice versa. Yeah, PPC and paid media is a scaling tool. You know, like once you grow. We don't have any software. No, the same, the same Facebook UI that you would use is the same that we use. We just have 16 people able to access it. The experience behind it. I mean, there's some software we use for spying on competitors and stuff like that. Yeah. But the, I mean, like social the listening software. Yeah, but the thing is, like, it's like a photographer. Like, you know, like. It's really about your creative eye at the end of the day. You can have all the tools in the world, but if you don't know, if you don't have a good strategy, it's not really bad. Oh, there you go. You're back. Oh, 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 the power. Uh, thank you both for your wisdom, as I have a lot of work to do, but I'm grateful for the task. And so my question is, say I'm doing a DIY, doing my own ads, but just under 5K, at what point should I let an ad run before I change the copy or the messaging, before I split test it to another creative? How long would you typically let that run before you make an adjustment? Typically the rule of thumb is like two weeks worth of data. That's just the rule of thumb. Two, two weeks worth of data. But, you know, that varies based on budget as well. Like if you're spent, if you have a thousand dollar a budget and uh, you, you gather all the insights you need with just a thousand dollars, you can even double click on that and just go by the, uh, you just need a solid sample size of clicks, honestly. And so for one ad set or for one creative, I like to at least have between 100 and 200 clicks to, to deem now, okay, this was good, this was bad. It's just having the right sample size. And like I said, the little is two weeks. Yeah, uh, two weeks for the creative. Also, you can test them head to head and then wait two weeks to see who's performing better and then take the other one out. Um, you can also Google and Facebook do author studies where they will be probably about this because they want to answer this quick survey. And it will say, like, you, do you remember seeing this app? And they cost between $500 to $1,000, but then you get a sample size of, like, is this resonating with your target? Or did they even remember your ad? Is it not memorable enough? Awesome. Well, damn, this has been an awesome night. Everyone give it up for our panelists. They got to Team, and we got friends, so let's keep this thing going. Hit the music, let's go.